PowerPoint or, or the presenter mode? I want to make sure you can see my slides. So can you can everyone see the animation like a like an animation on the right hand yes. side? Okay, perfect. Yes, I can. Yeah, so when we are waiting for more people, I recommend to try to look at the animation on the right hand side. So this is the animation showing how two Mobius band can be connected to a client bottle, and which is, uh, I think, the most essential topology I will use today. Yeah, so please try to gain some intuition like how this works. This is like a group two Mobius band become a yeah like yeah a, exactly so you start with two mobile span perpendicular to each other and you try to glue the boundary of them and they can form the client bottle and that's rp2 also play a role you can grow yeah i think yeah this is yeah I, I will explain why i need this kind of picture when i define a framing loop you can also group rp2 with a disk but so right. you can climb bottle with a disk to get RP2, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah so I think the, the most in essential part is when you apply the fermionic membranes operate on the climb bottle, you get a minus one. Yeah, yeah I, I will try to talk about the detail later. So for now, you just try to gain some geometrical <laughs> intuition of uh, this process.
Okay, maybe we can start. Let me also start recording. Yeah, uh, it's my honor to. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's, it's my honor to speak at the Harvard MSA and thanks for Juven to organize this seminar. Sorry, I haven't welcomed everyone. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Go ahead. And also, your screen is off. Welcome everyone to Harvard CMSA Quantum Matter in Math Physics Seminar Series. seminar. It is our great honor to invite Dr. Yu An Chen, uh, Chen Yu An, from originally from Caltech. I think currently he works at the University of Maryland. Uh, Yu An studied previously at Caltech under supervision of uh, Professor Anton Kapustin, and he did his undergrad at MIT. And before that, I think he was studying in Taiwan. So today he will be talking about some recent work he did with Bo Senxin on exactly solvable lattice Hamiltonians and the gravitational anomalies, fermioni particle codes and fermioni loops. There's also some relative works and talk given by uh, Lukas, Lukas, Lukas Vikowski. And you can also watch, find on YouTube. So I just remind the audience, please feel free to interact with Yuan if you find the appropriate time. So let us directly welcome Yuan. Um, please take over. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for Juven, the nice introduction. And yeah, today I will talk about my recent work with Paulson about the paper on the, the archive number is, is below. So it's about how do we construct exactly solvable less, less Hamiltonian for gravitational anomaly. And in particular, we show that on the boundary theory, it will host anomalous theory, which has the fermionic particle and fermionic loop. So in this talk, I will try to define what's the meaning of fermionic loop. Yeah, so before I, I start, I should try to encourage the people to ask many questions, as many as possible, because that we have a very wide background of audience. So I cannot cover every detail. So if you feel confused about any terminology I mentioned, like what's C4 within the class, like what's control Z gate, you, you should just ask, yeah. So this is the outline of, of my talk. So first I will try to define what's fermionic particle and the fermionic loop. Yeah, so I, I try to add a quotation mark for the fermionic loop. Because so far, I feel this is a still an open area. So we, we still don't quite have a very rigorous way to, to define what's the fermionic loop. But I will propose some reasonable uh, definition in this talk, and we can discuss if it, it makes sense to you or not. And later, I will show how it's related by the second and third Stephen Whitney class. And then I will describe the topological phase uh, from the point of view of TGFT, and how do we construct the beyond Colmage phase with gravitational anomaly? In particular, in, in this example, I will show the 4 plus 1D phase with W2, W3 gravitational anomaly. Here, the W2 and W3 are the C4 winning case. And finally, I will show that on the boundary of this uh, for, uh, invertible topological phase, it holds the fermion particle and fermionic loop. Okay, first I try to review the property of fermionic particle. I think everyone should be very familiar, familiar with. Yeah, so the first property is given the fermionic particle, if we rotate by two pi, it should get a minus sign. And the second property is like given two particle, when we exchange two of them, like exchange the position, which we, we should also get a minus one. Now actually these two definition are equivalent to each other. Like these two sign must be dependent. Like if one is a minus one, the other must be minus one. The reason is so-called a spin specific theorem. Yeah, so basically this spin specific theorem can be summarized by the, by the following uh, ribbon diagram. Yeah, so consider a, a one fermion is, is a ribbon. So because like we can think of a one is a fermion line and the other de defined is framing we need to use some framing to determine a fermion. Yeah, so on the left side is we try to rotate this ribbon by two pi. And on the right side, 
we can also arrange the ribbon go 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 like this go across a circle and and go up yeah you can do a experiment you, you just prepare a very long paper and when you try to stretch the right right hand side it will automatically give you the two pi flip yeah so so these two figures are equivalent to each other by their topology and when 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 it's a fermion which means when i rotate two pi it's going to minus sign yeah so we can try to view the, the right diagram slightly different so we can rotate by 90 degree and this from this shape like a, the number eight so on the left we interpret as a, we create from the vacuum we create two fermion and the right fermion we flip by two pi and then we annihilate these two fermions. And on the right side, it's like from the vacuum, we create two fermions, and then we exchange the position and then annihilate them. Yeah, so from this ribbon diagram, we can see the, the spin. So the, the sign comes from the uh, rotation and the statistic, the sign comes from the exchange position they must agree with, with each other. So these two signs must be both equal to minus one or plus one, depends on it's a fermion or boson. Yeah, and so here is the practical way to detect a particle is, is a fermion. So this is called T-junction process. I think this is proposed by Michael Levin and Xiao Gang Wen back to 2003. And this figure I just, Copy from recent paper by Hart, Hastings, and Vygotsky. So the idea is very simple. So consider we prepare two particles. So, so they are the same particle. I just use different color to, to label, to, to, to visualize. So first, I move the blue particle in the center and to the top. And then I move the red particle from the right to the center and to the left. And then finally, I move back this blue particle from the top to the right hand side. So if we compare the first configuration and the final configuration, we can see these two particles like each other position. Uh, the advantage of this process is we can see first we apply some, so the N1 is the hopping along this line, N3 is hopping along the vertical line and the power determine the, the, the direction. So we can see there's an N1 minus and there's an N1. So, so during this process, we may accumulate some local dyna dynamical phase, but by, by this T-junction process, it's guaranteed that any local phase, they are canceled out. So for example, if I define my fermion with slightly different position, or during this process, I have extra phase, so this extra phase is always canceled out by, by other operators somewhere else. Yeah, so this is, a, I would say this is a critical way to detect the, the, the fermionic statistic of particle exchange. Yeah, so any questions so far? Yeah, so here I just review the well-known procedure. Okay, so here come with the new thing. We want to define the fermionic loop. So this is our proposal with me and, and portion. Yeah, so consider a, a fermionic loop excitation. It's created by some membrane operator. So for example, on the disk, we apply the, some operator on this membrane, and this will uh, 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 get some loop excitation on the boundary. We consider two different properties of a fermionic loop. So the first one is consider we have the, the fermionic loop on the boundary of this disk. And then on the vertical line, we do some pi rotation. So which means I, I flip this disk. So, so here the, the arrow is just a label. So, 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 so the loop itself doesn't have any orientation. The, the, the arrow here, I just try to visualize. We can compare the original configuration and the final configuration it looked like we flip the, 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 the loop by, by 180 degree. Yeah, so the first definition of the fermionic loop is the loop under this flipping, it gives you the minus sign. 
Yeah. So this I would call it a property one of frame mounting loop. Sorry, uh, Yuan, can I have a quick question? Yes. Hi, uh, which space, what's the space time dimensions here? Uh, yeah, so uh, here is unimportant, but in this world, we will work on the three plus one D boundary of the four plus one D SPT phase. Yeah. Okay, but the process you said doesn't, wouldn't make sense in two plus one D, right? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, above three dimension, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so a more generally, it's like we, we have a string and we can deform it in, in some 3D space. And finally, we can somehow flip, flip it to go back to the original configuration, but just a different error. And this should give you some, some sign, minus one. Okay, the property two is a little more tricky. So we consider we apply the our UN, UN is the membrane operator, create a frame running, create a loop excitation. If we apply the UN on some surface and the surface has some orientation reversing domain wall. So we should expect this is kind of like the defect on this membrane operator. So, and we, if the loop excitation is frame running, so we expect this the orientation reversing domain wall is the fermion wall line. So which means at the, the end point of this domain wall, it, it has some fermion particle. Yeah. Uh, so in some sense, like on the surface with orientation reversing domain wall, and if we apply this uh, members operate, and this will give you some fermion copying along this domain wall. So this is our second definition for fermion loop. Yeah, so at the first, seeing this, we may imagine it's one equivalent to two, or like, uh, is there any possibility like, uh, are they consistent with each other or not? Yeah, so I, I try to argue that these two definition are actually equivalent. Sorry, Ian, in the second definition, yes. Do you need to, do you need to assume the bulk theory is time reversal invariant? Uh, I see. guess I'm a little bit confused by what you mean by orientation reversal, re reversing domain wall. Uh, okay, I, maybe I can go to a, the example in the next slide, but I think in the, in the fourth space, we consider the orient, orientable surface, like orientable manifold in four plus one, but in this orientable manifold, we can have some like a Klein bottle or, or Mobius strip. <clears throat> so it has some unorientable un surface. And on this surface, if we try to define some <clears throat> local orientation, we need to assign some, some orientation reversing work. Okay, okay. maybe I, I just describe by, by this example. If I try to, so here the blue square is the Mobius strip. So we try to identify the, the right side and left side with opposite orientation. And now, because it's un unorientable, we cannot actually define the orientation, but we can just choose some arbitrarily, the, the, this brown line, the sun, the sun defect. So on the right side, I assign a plus orientation. On the left side, I, I assign a minus orientation. And so, so use this defect, the orientation is well defined on the Mobius tree, and then we can apply our membrane operates. Yeah, so, so Suhan, does this uh, kind of clarify your, for your questions? If we forget about the membrane operator, what is yeah. this orientation reversing domain wall? Oh, uh, it's just like, um, uh, I, so it's just, we want to assign some, some orientation locally on the surface such that it's well defined. So if there's no, no domain wall or no defect, we cannot do that on the Mobius tree. So if we just choose certain domain wall, we can indeed oh. assign, assign orientation on the Mobius tree. Oh, sorry, let, let me make sure. So this is a domain wall on the surface, not the domain wall in the whole bulk system. Oh, yeah, yeah, I said, yeah. I right. see, I see, okay, no, I, I see, okay, thank you. Yeah. Maybe this is um, related it seems the membrane operator is somehow important for both the first picture and the second picture. Yeah. 
in a sense, naively, if I just look at the first one, it seems like uh, you may consider if I just have loops and you can put these loops along some non contractable S1 circle or one mm -hmm. cycle. And then you may dimensionally reduce the system by putting this S1 circle to be, uh, you know, it's a compact direction. And then if you remove this circle or you, if you make this circle, just uh, uh, take this circle, uh, take take out this circle and the remaining space will be one dimensional lower. And you can still thinking about do this pipe rotation, which is like a- It, it change of two particle, right? It change of uh, two, two small circle. Uh, actually, right. Actually, you can just uh, consider a, a loop along uh, the S1 circle without another one. But but because you have a membrane, it seems like you cannot just have one loop. You need to have yeah. a- Right. Okay. So, so so I'm just trying to comment that uh, it seems this membrane is important. And yeah. Uh, yeah, another thing, maybe, maybe, maybe related, maybe not. If, if you don't have a membrane, maybe you need some kind of a frame along this wall line. Mm -hmm. So, so perhaps you can still define the orientation of this pipe rotation, even without membrane. Although I'm not sure, but I just comment maybe this, uh, this are uh, another possibility. With membrane, I think both of your picture has no problem. But if I only have a loops, it seems doesn't make sense. Just consider a loop to do a pi rotation. But if you have a frame, maybe there is still a way you can define such a rotation. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, and I, I agree with what you say. I just make comment say the membrane seems very important. And if there is no membrane, does still does this rotation still make sense? Mm -hmm. And maybe you need some kind of frame. I see. That's all I see. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the comment. Okay. So now I try to argue these two definitions are actually related to each other. Okay. So the way to do it is we first consider the Mobius tree and I just randomly assign some line as a some domain wall so, such that I can define the orientation on the Mobius tree. So by the property two on this brown line, the endpoint is a fermion. So we can think of it as a hopping between two fermion particles. And now we consider two perpendicular Mobius tree. So the, the blue one is the vertical and the green one is the horizontal. Yeah, and I choose the orientation reversing domain wall they allow in the midpoint, mid they, they are close to each other. So we can think of the, the blue one, the blue Mobius tree, move the fermion from the bottom to the top. And uh, the green one, it move the fermion from the front to the back. And if, we, so this look, look like the exchange process of this uh, two fermion particle, if and only if we, we can close the, the, the wall line of the fermion. Yeah. So to get the right-hand side, the minus sign of the exchange fermion, we, we can glue the boundary of these two Mobius three. So yeah, so these edges of the blue Mobius tree is, is glued with these edges of the green one and same thing for the button. Yeah, so this is the reason why I post this anime. Yeah, so for the people who come later, I, I, I will try to give you 10 seconds to, to visualize this one. So we start from the two Mobius tree and try to connect their, their boundary. So Turn out to be the final metaphor is the client battle. Yeah, so, so it, it may not see very easily from the first time, but it's easy to see from the, from the right hand side. So from the right hand side, it's the square. I, I identify the bottom line and the top line with the same orientation, and the left and right with opposite orientation. Uh, let, let, let's some typo here. I think this should be, uh, sorry. This error should be going top. And then we can decompose the client bottle into two regions. One is this orange region, the other one is the blue region. So it decomposes into two uh, Mobius tree. So yeah, it is very well known like a two Mobius tree equal to one client bottle. Yeah, so, so for the previous, previous process, I apply the membranes operate on these two Mobius tree and, and glue them. This give you minus one, minus one is equivalent saying, okay, I apply the members operate on the client button and get a minus sign. And there, there's a second view 
for this client battle process. So we can think of from a button, we have a vacuum and we go to, go top and we create two loop excitation. And during the process, we flip one of the loop and at, at the top, we align like this two loop excitation. So the flipping of the loop equal to minus one if when only if the, the charge, charge excitation here is a fermion. So they, they, they one imply each other. So if this charge is fermion, the flipping of a, of a loop must be equal to one. And this based on this argument, we have the two different view to view the client battle. One is the, this kind of space time process of creating two loop and flip one of them. The other is we try to view the client battle as a, a, a gluing of two Mobius 3 and the Mobius 3 carry, carry some fermion uh, moving. Yeah, so. Typo, just make sure the typo is the arrow on the left, the blue should be up, right? Yeah, yeah, the blue should be up. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question just for clarification? Yes. Um, so uh, uh, what's the motivation for, you know, attaching the fermion to, because here, you know, I, I get that, you know, you have a climb bottle and then by looping the fermionic loop or just a loop excitation around the climb bottle, you can change the framing, like you flip the framing essentially. Yeah, so like, I'm wondering why, um, well, because you're gonna, well, you're gonna talk about steeple winning classes and yeah. And I was wondering like, can't we just define the statistics of this loop just using this framing, right? Like this W3 uh, uh, framing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so, so far I just give you some kind of hand wavy definition like uh, we have no, no reason why we need to define this way. And for the later part of the talk, I will start from a second and third stiffle winning case. And how I was from like a W3 and I will try to derive this property too. Okay. Like, so this will become clearer once I go through the, the derivation later, yeah. Okay, like I guess you can kind of think about the two fermions at the end points being their difference being the trivialization of W3 or something. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about the framing story for a fermion loop, but I, I, I know the story for fermion and we can use some property to rate the W2 and W3. I, okay. I will try to mention it and you can ask the question later if you feel if you Okay, still. sounds good, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so any uh, any questions? So yeah, this is the take home message of my, my talk. Like we have two different properties for fermion loop and they are equivalent. And my late, late, the later part of my talk will be a little technical because it will involve a lot of C3 for winning class, like a U formula. Yeah, so I think this is a pretty good point to, to, to start and think of these two properties. <laughs> oh, sorry, I forget one thing to mention. Yeah, so like in the 2D, uh, sorry, in the fermion particle, we have the key junction process to detect the, the, the fermion statistic. And in the recent paper by, by Ha, Hazing and Fikowski, so actually uh, Fikowski gave a talk on the CMSA before, so please use this YouTube thing. I think it's in the Juven's YouTube channel. So the, they try to control a process. So they start from the original configuration of some, some loop excitation, and it goes through the 30, 36 process. And it go back to the original configuration with the error in the opposite direction. So, so you can see if on this, on this uh, configuration, I, I cancel all the right-hand side, the error will become from the top to the bottom, so on this direction. And this error is from the bottom to the top. So during this process, they flip the, the spin by pi rotations, uh, like uh, roughly speaking. And they design this process such that any dynamical phase are canceled out. So for example, you can see if I do something about the N13 here, there always be something about N13 minus to cancel out any dynamical phase. 
Yeah, I think this process is actually amazing. Yeah, you know, when I write a paper with Poisson, we only realize the, the second property and we don't quite use the, we don't quite know how to use the first one because of the dynamic, dynamical phase. And they lost also they figure out this process. I think it's very fascinating. Yeah, I highly recommend you, you watch this video. Um, I have a question. So for, <laughs> part, for particles in two plus one D, we know there could be more general annual statistics. Right. I guess for loops, there isn't such a generalization. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't quite know. Yeah, I, I see in all division, there's only plus minus one, one meter. In, in any way, the W2 and W3, they are Z2 cohomology class. So I, I don't think it makes any sense to, to go to like any only loop from our perspective. So maybe, I, I'm not sure, yeah. I just say in our framework, we cannot talk about any, any other group. Yeah, I think I agree. I think from the continuum Lagrangian point of view, that seems to be the case. But if you have now consider some two dimensional excitations, then maybe if you go to high enough dimension, you can have more interesting statistics. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. Maybe it depends on, um, it depends on what you mean by anionic. Because it, it can also be anionic between several loops. Maybe maybe not a single loop, but uh, several loops you can braid with fractional statistics. Are you talking about a through loop braiding or, or more generally? Yeah, through loop braiding, for example, or other even more loops. I you see. can get fractional statistics for sure. Even though even though it's not a single loop process like what you show. But I think the our current like a Fermat loop is different from the through loop braiding. I, I don't see how they related to each other at this point. I think they are different concepts. Yeah, this this one is self loop, like self statistics, and mm -hmm. the through loop one is mutual statistics okay. between strings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. So really related. So is it true that this, um, if I so I flip the loop once and. So if I did uh, a two pi rotation of the loop, is it clear that in three plus one D that's a trivial process? Um, I will guess. Well, I guess I don't trivial. know. I'm just asking. I, I don't know, but I guess it, it's trivial. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. I guess this is equivalent to like in two plus one D where they're like. The full braiding is like always. Two, two pi rotation, uh, two, two pi exchange can be non-trivial, right? But mm -hmm. I guess if you want to claim that the loop is, can be only a fermion, then you have to show that two pi rotation of the loop is a trivial process. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's trivial. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe it require high dimension, like a 4D or something. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, but that's a good, good question. Thanks for pointing out. Okay, so, so let me continue. So I tried, so, so at, at this point, so this definition, we don't see how it related to the definition of fermion. So it, it may be just some, some random definition of some weird loop excitation. And here I try to formulate the definition of the fermionic loop and fermionic particle more mathematically. Yeah, so, so we start from the torical example. So the torical, just the, the, the most standard torical, there's nothing twisty or anything going on. So for in a three plus one D torical, we have the E charge and N loop. Both of them are, are boson and they have the mutual state, like a N particle going through the, sorry, E particle going through the N loop, it, it picks up some minus sign. So the, the action can be right down, right down, it's simply like a cup dB. And the equation of motion, it just gives you delta A equal to zero when we integrate out B, and the delta B equal to zero when we integrate out A. Yeah, so this equation of motion imply, we can try to write down some latest Hamiltonian. So you have the like X star 10 and the Z plus K 10. Yeah, so, so so far there's nothing exotic happen. It's just a bosonic torical with bosonic charge and bosonic loop. And now I try to define the fermion in this way. So here in the bosonic case, the delta A equals to zero 
And in the fermion particle case, I try to require the delta A equal to W2. And for the fermion loop, I try to require the delta B equal to W3. So we can, we can, think, we can take these two lines as a definition. But I think the first, first line, this one is very well known in the high energy physics, like uh, because what's the meaning of delta A? It's like we have some cross wall line and the W2 is the some abstraction to have the spin structure. Like you can think of, we can, the fermion requires some framing and the framing is ill-defined somewhere on the W2. Yeah, so, so this is quite natural for the fermionic particle. And the, the new, new thing is here, I think it's compatible with the proposal by Ryan Songgren. So we use the W3 to define the fermionic loops. And I will start from this two to justify the property of fermionic loop I proposed a few slides ago before. Yeah, so as a practice, we start with the fermionic particle. So the, the, the this one is the torical action. And we, we, we want the equation for motion to be the delta A equal to W2. The simplest way is just we, we can uh, add another term is the B cup W2. So when we integrate out the B, it gives you the correct equation of motion. Yeah, so we want to detect the, the one form symmetry, sorry, the, yeah, so, so this is A sum from one form. We want to detect the anomaly for, for this charge excitation. So we just couple to some three form background field. A cup, A, like little a cup A3. And this is the gauge transformation. So it turns out to be we need to add something in the bulk. So we, so we start with some manifold, four manifold M4. We need to in, 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 introduce the bulk term. So we add this bulk term to make sure the whole equation is invariant under this gauge transformation. Yeah, so we can say the, 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 this anomaly is captured by the bulk action the W2 cup A3. So yeah, so there are many equivalent relation for, for this equation. For example, W2 cup A3 is just a single square, A3 is just a A3 cup one, A3. Yeah, so as, yeah, so for, for people who are not familiar with the, the property of Stephen Winnie class, you can think of it just as some way we can calculate the, the action in the book. And I will try to geometrically argue the, the meaning of this book. Yeah, because so far here, the A3 cup one A3 is the four plus one D turn is hard to visualize. And to, to, to actually demonstrate the meaning of this turn, I just, try to go down by, by one dimension. So I just change the A3 to some A2. So we can show that the A3 carbon A3 can be reduced to A2 carbon A2 if I just ignore certain, certain direction. Uh, sorry, are you assuming the bulk to be orientable? Uh, yeah, 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 here. Oh, bulk okay, is, yeah. Well, yeah. Because we don't have a W1. Yeah, if you use the yes. blue formula, there's some W1 yeah. square, I, I just ignore yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So here A2 is the point for a dual to the to the wall line. Yeah. So so we can think of the A2 is just some wall line correspond to wall line of some, some fermion. And here the, the, the red one is fermion and the purple one is, is framing. So we just call it A2 prime. So now I, I consider a movie. So I try to twist the framing. So in the final comparison, the framing rotate two pi compared to the original wall line. So dur during this twisting, there must be some, somewhere in the middle, the, the framing is ill-defined because the framing need to like shrink down to, to zero. And this point we can Argue is captured by by this this piece a two cup a two, yeah. So so this is uh shown in the three Tata's paper. He has a paper about how do we define geometrically the car product, yeah. And the fig this figure is in one of the Liu Hei Kobayashi's work. Yeah, actually I think he make make this figure. Yeah. So the point is 
this anomaly turn capture the minus sign when changing the framing. So which means this bulk anomaly suggests this fermion, uh, this particle rotate two pi, give you minus one and saying this, this is the wall line of fermion. Yeah. So, so this is the kind of a space time picture to, to realize what does the bulk anomaly imply the, the fermionicity? Any question? Yes. Yeah. Well, what's the spatial special about this the star, the red star there? Oh. I'm not uh, sure why, why is oh. this needed between t equals zero, t equals one. Can you just smoothly or maybe oh, no, so this cannot be smoothly because uh, you can see here the, the, the framing and the wall line they have no twisting. And at the final, the, the framing actually twists two pi around the, the, the wall line. So these two process cannot be continuous defined if all vectors are non-zero. So there must be some place you, you the, the vector string to zero. There's some singularity, singularity here. And this singularity, the touching point is de described by this car product. And how about, yes, I think I agree, but how about just thinking about twisted full ribbon? Then, oh, but but, then, but twisted then, is, then, is then, a global action. Right? You, you try to twist it globally. Maybe saying the, the, the red star is some fixed point when you try to do the twisting. Something like that. There's some sing, yeah, there's some singularity of vector field when you try to do twisting. Yeah, you can say that must be some zero zero point during yeah. this process. You try to do the twisting, even if you try to tw twist the ribbon. Yeah. And that's the race star, some singularity of vector field. Hmm. Yeah, so yes, so so here is just some Hamiltonian picture for, for the Torico. So in the center torical, we have a Z star 10, sorry, X star 10 and Z plus K 10. And now the Z plus K 10 is decorated by, by some X star 10. So this is the, the fermionic torical. And we can write down the excitation. So we can see the button three, they commute with the right-hand side, but they violate the star 10. So we can see that these three hopping operate create two, two charges on the endpoint of this Z. Z line. And we can use the T-junction process to argue this is indeed a fermionic hopping. Yeah. Uh, so for so for many particles, the latest model is well understood. I think this is also proposed by Levin and Wen long time ago. Okay, so let's go to the more exciting part is the fermionic string as uh, a fermionic loop. Yeah, so uh, as we want equation of motion to be the delta B equal to W3. So we just try to add a new term, it's just A cup W3. When we integrate out the A, it gives you the delta B equal to W3. And to detect the anomaly of this, uh, this two-form two -form field, we, we couple the B into some, some background B2. Yeah, and this is the gauge transformation. So when, when A go to A plus alpha, B2 must be B2 plus delta alpha. And because of this extra term, we, we need to add something in the bulk to cancel out this extra term to make sure the whole impression is getting variant under the transformation. Okay, so this is the bulk anomaly. So we will try to understand what's the geometrical meaning of, of this term. Yeah, so first we just play around the, the, the algebra. So we can write down the W3 equal to dW2 by two. So this is the, the box 10, or sometimes people call steam rule one. Yeah, let me write some, some here. Yeah, so people may, may write steam rule one, uh, W2, or, or equal to box 10 W2. Yeah, there are many uh, notation for, for this operation. But I, I chose the easiest way. It just we apply the co-boundary operator and, and divide by two. And we can integral by part. We move this delta to the right side. So it becomes W2 cup delta B2 divided by two. So from previous argument, we know the W2 cup cup to something means that something is fermion. 
Yeah, so we need to understand, okay, what's the meaning of delta B2 divided by two? Yeah, so the, the geometric meaning of the delta B divided by two is the worksheet of a loop on the orientation reversing domain wall. Yeah, so, so let's give you a very simple example. Yeah, so consider lambda one, is just some one code chain acting on a link. So lambda one give you some zero or one on, 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 each, on each link. So let's focus on the, the link IJ. So on the left triangle, we can see the IJ is counterclockwise. So on the left triangle, if the orientation, the OAO is orientation, or if the orientation is plus, we should get a lambda one divided by two. So on the right hand side, we can see this IJ edges is clockwise along this right triangle. So it gives you the minus of orientation. So we can see if both the orientation are plus or minus, so this turn cancel out, the lambda on the IJ doesn't contribute. So the, the lambda only contributes on the edge IJ if and only if on the left is plus, on the right is minus. So on the orientation reversing wall, the delta lambda one divided by two give you the lambda on this IJ. So this is the lower dimension picture for, for this term. So for delta B divided by two, we can think of is the uh, wash of loop, also wash of the, the loop is attention on the orientation reversing domain wall. Yeah, so we can interpret this W3 cup, sorry, W3 cup B2 as the W2 cup the, the domain wall configuration. So which means the domain wall must carry a fermion. Yeah, so from, from this argument, we say membranes operate on the orientation reversing domain wall equal to the fermion hopping. So this justify the, our previous definition of this definition two. Yeah, so any question? Oh, sorry, I should create this annotation, my bad. So conclusion is like, when, when we have the delta B equal to W3, the physical meaning is, uh, is described before. So that's the reason why I want to argue about the particle excitation on the domain wall. Okay, now, so far we just construct some general property of Fermion loop. And now we are trying to find some concrete model write down the latest Hamiltonian like, and excitation and wave function to actually realize what type of the operator can be fermionic loop. And start from here, I, let, let me briefly review the SPD phase, a uh, uh, topological phase as TQFT. Yeah, so the TQFT, the definition is given a closed manifold like an MD we evaluate with a partic partition function on this manifold and let's give you some, some complex number. So in general, we can have many degree of freedom on the manifold. For example, the B field can be some group element and this action is the function of the manifold and the group, group element on, on, the, on the manifold. And we can sum in over configuration and give you the, the total partition function. Yeah, so, so this is the TQAT, and we also recognize this as a definition of topological phase. And there's a famous construction, it's called group cohomology, group cohomology construction. So actually, this is uh, related to the Dagua Witten theory. And so the, the Dagua Witten is back to 1990, and the group cohomology SPT is by Professor Wen, uh, Chenggu Liu Wen at 2013. The way to write down this topologization is just given a function. So we, we the, the nu d is a function assigning a, a number to each d simplex. And this action is just on the manifold. We try to sum in over this function for all, all simplex. Now this function needs to satisfy certain condition to make sure this quantity is topological invariant. So for example, if you try to retriangulation or if you try to apply the group symmetry, this must be invariant. So let's give you some constraint on this function. 
So usually we call this is a closed cycle. So closed cycle is just a function which is closed. Yeah, the famous example is just we can write down the function as the b copy copy. It's a two plus one d SPD. It's called eleven one SPD, and it corresponds to a double semi on top hundred order. So in, in principle, we can write down any kappa that involve this b. So this gives you the complete good cohomology construction. Okay, so something new is the beyond cohomology phase. So in the previous previous example, I only use the, the B field, the, the background, sorry, the, the gauge field for the any for some symmetry group to, to write down the action. But in, in principle, we can also utilize the characteristic class of the manifold to write down the action. So for example, given the, the five manifold, there's some we can define the tangent bundle, and the tangent bundle have the certain characteristic class. So the graph, the, the, in this example, it's just some state for winning class. So for example, we can just write down B cap W2 cap W2, or we can write down W2 cap W3. So this term, this term is called gravitational anomaly because it doesn't depend on your any gauge field or any gauge symmetry. It just depends on your global, uh, the global manifold. Yeah, uh, people know this, this theory for a long time, but I think no one have ever constructed the latest model actually correspond to, to this kind of phase. So in this talk, I will provide a, a recipe how to construct this type of uh, gravitational anomaly phase. Yeah, uh, any, any question so far? Uh, you mean by a uh, latest Hamiltonian or latest path interval? Uh, this is Hamiltonian, yeah, importantly. I think path integral is, is understood by Juven Wang, uh, Juven and Xiaofang Wen for like a, a few years ago. And I, uh, something new is the latest Hamiltonian. We will write down exactly the four plus one D Hamiltonian and study their boundary series. But, but let me make sure, how about Bikowski's, Lukash work? Oh, do I, um, do I also have a Hamiltonian for that? The, the, you mean the recent one? Yes, the recent one. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good question. I think they are in the same phase, but they don't quite use the language of Stephen Winnie class. So they try to control some Hamiltonian with the surface from Yang Lu excitation. And by some classification uh, conclusion, they conclude their model correspond to, to this phase. But I think it's indirect. There's no way you define some passing the code to get W2, W3 or, or vice versa. I think the benefit of our construction is like, we can start from this action directly and write down the, it's Hamiltonian. Yeah, it, it's more direct. So maybe your construction is more on the bulk while their construction is starting from the boundary. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but I think, uh, yeah, the bulk and boundary they are, quite, they are, they are corresponding to each other, yeah. I, yeah, I'm not quite, quite sure about how, how they control their, their model, but I'm pretty sure they are in the same phase, yeah. Okay, so why do I jump the, from the Fermiani loop to this W2W3 phase? I think the, 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 the most interesting property of this phase is this is the four plus one D phase, and on, on its three plus one D boundary, it holds the Fermiani loop with citation. I, I'm going to show how to control the Fermi loop citation from, from this model. So let's, let me justify this claim. So we start from a toric here. So A cup delta B. So A is some one, one, one form, one cold chain, B is some two cold chain. And we add these two terms at the same time, A cup W3 and B cup W2. So from the equation of motion, this gives you the delta A equals W2, which means the wall line is uh, Fermi. The, Delta B equals W3, which means the wall sheet is also fermion, like fermion particle and fermion loop. And yeah, but 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 we need to be cautious, cautious when we write write down this action. So this action is actually ill-defined. The reason is because when we okay, first we integrate out B, integrating out B give you the delta A equal to W2. And we can extend this. 
M4 to X5 and plug in the delta A equal to W2. So actually this parting function depends on how do you extend the, the boundary to the bulb to the X5 and the W2, W3. So to cancel out this term, we introduce the, the this term in the box. Yeah, so it's like this theory on the boundary M4 together with this uh, piece at uh, WW3 on the box X5, combination of these two terms, they are well defined. So which means we can say interpret it in this way. So this W2, W3 topological phase in the box has this boundary theory with the Fermionic particle and Fermionic group. And we are trying to trying to study this theory and control the exact so so the latest model for, for this one. Yeah. Okay, let me show the how do we control the W2W3 phase? Yeah. So we start from a one phone Z2 and two phone Z2 commodity SPT. Yeah, so the one form symmetry we cover to the background field is called A2. For the two form Z2 theory, it also cover to the it cover to the three form background field, we call it B3. And I define the action in this way. Mm. Yeah, so, so here I can try to tell you the meaning of this, this three term. So here the B3, car one B3, we can write it down as some thin row square. B3. So let's tell you, tell you there's a fermion particle, fermion particle. Yeah, fermion. Ah, it's hard to write down. <laughs> it's called, so called bosonization, I argued before. And this A2 car B3 tell you the mutual statistic. Given a loop excitation, and you have a particle, you move, move, move around this loop, you pick up minus sign. So the, the, the term here, tell you these two types of excitation have a mutual minus sign. And this is can be right as uh, A2, thin row one, A2. And this is the path for the fermionic loop. So this tell you the loop excitation is fermionic. Yeah, so this is just some, some way to, to interpret these three terms. Yeah, but, but at this point, we can just take this as a definition. We just take it for given. So it will become clear why, why we need to define this three term. Yeah. Okay, starting from this higher form SPT, we can try to gauge the one form Z2 and two form Z2 symmetry. The, the gauging means we just summing over A2 and, and B3. Yeah, so first we apply the Woods formula. The Woods formula tell you the, the, the first piece can be written in terms of W2 car B3. And then when we integrate out the B3 here, this give you the W2 equal to A2. And then when we summing over A, which basically replace A2 with W2. So we have W2 cup. So this is SQ1. W2, and this equal to W2, W3. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the, the, the trick we use here is we don't have a knowledge to impress locally the W2. Like uh, there's no very clear way to, to, to write down the W2 and W3 locally. So it's, it's not, it's very hard to define a latest model for this W2 and W3, but we can utilize some, some U formula. So we can start with some higher form gauge field and inter integrating out. Like when we integrating out the B3, this imposes the A2 equal to W2. Yeah, so we can translate the, the dependence of the Stephen winning class into some local gauge field. And this local gauge field is correspond to higher form symmetry. Yeah, so the, the one sentence description is like, we start from a higher form SPT, engage the higher form symmetry, and leave it, this can give you some gravitational anomaly action. 
Re remind me or remind us how do you impose W2 equal to A2? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Uh, this is an equation of motion. So let me write it down. Sorry. W2 uh, car B3. And this is the A2 car B3. So when we sum it over then, it, the total term is an A2 plus W2 car B3. And when we in, when we integrate our B3, so this is just some Lagrangian multiplier. The Lagrangian multiplier enforces the first piece to be zero. Otherwise, it is it, canceled out. And this equal to zero, which means A2 equal to W2. Yeah, but my question is that uh, do you still need to write down W2 explicitly in your in your in your partition function? Do you still uh, need to write W2 explicitly? Because this expression doesn't have it. So uh, yeah, uh, so so I think it's uh when we integrate out the B3, we just plug plug back A2 equal to W2. Because we sum it over A2. So it's like a delta function. So integrate now B3 give you the delta action delta function. Uh, yeah, my bad. Uh, I cannot see my mouse. One second, I have some technical technical issue. Okay, yeah, so, so so this piece give you delta function A2 W2. And then when we sum in over A2, and this uh, A2 a single one, A2, this equal to W2 tab SQ1 W2. Uh, do I answer your question, Juven? Uh, yeah, I think you're trying to, but let me just make sure. So do you need to write W2 explicitly in your partition function or you don't? No, no, no. There's no. Uh, like a, in the partition function, there's only just the two form field and three form field. We, we, we don't impose any additional data. It, the W2 coming from the U formula and the coming from the inter inter integrating our B3. Yes, I see that. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. yeah. So this is uh, this is the calculation trick we use. We don't have the direct knowledge for, for C4 winning class, but we have some, some way to make it appear during our calculation. Uh, due to U formula. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, so due to the, the time constraint, I I don't want to go into the, the detail, but the, the message is the higher form SPT is very is it's just like a Boltzmann SPT. So the construction is very similar to the Chang'e Liu Wen, the Boltzmann SPT for for zero form symmetry. So the basic idea is when we write down some action, it defines some. It depends on some five manifold. And if this five manifold has some boundary, so for them in this case, this is the spatial slice, we call it M4. And the five manifold is just a cone of M4. So we can evaluate this action on this open boundary five manifold. And this can give you the, the wave function amplitude for different configuration. So we have some configuration on the on the on the face and edges, and we just evaluate this partition function. And this can give you some wave function. And from the wave function, we can write down the Hamiltonian. Yeah, I, I don't want to go into any technical calculation, but in principle, it's just, you, uh, you, so it's the definition of TQVT. If you evaluate the, T, the partition function on the open manifold, it gives you the ground state on the boundary. Yeah, and the, on the, by the ground state, we can write down Hamiltonian. Yeah, and let me see. Yeah, because I I haven't introduced any information about about the term here, let me skip in the power of gauging. So if you believe in me, I have a latest picture 
how do we gauge the one-point symmetry? So we it just simply reply the flux operated by some single poly. Yeah, but, but this procedure is, is not that important. It's already known. It's just like, like crime when you do that. So yeah, to save time, let me skip this part and just jump into the conclusion. So the conclusion is like in the 44 Hamiltonian, we can um, write down in, in this piece. By the way, you have a lot of time, right? Oh, it isn't? It's 19 oh. minutes. You have a certain oh, okay. minute. I see. I, I keep thinking it's the uh, 11.30. Okay. okay, let me do it slowly. Yeah, so, so we can, so initially we have the degree of freedom on the face and the edges. This is come from the one form and two form field. Because for one form symmetry, we have the degree of freedom on the link. For two form symmetry, we have the degree of freedom on the face. So in the original SPD model, we have the policy Z on the edge and face. And after gauging, so gauging is like we propose, like we promote the, the flux operate. So the flux is a part of E around the face, and we move it into some single poly on the face. And similarly, for part of face around the tetrahedra, we make it a single poly of the Z. So this is called a gauging, gauging the iPhone symmetry. So getting a symmetry, we can write down a Hamiltonian in, in this messy form. And this is the four plus one D Hamiltonian. So I don't have any way to visualize this one. It's a this complicated Carpa equation. But now I try to do is I try to construct its boundary Hamiltonian. So the boundary is three plus one D. So in the three plus one D, I, I can at least draw something to, to, to get a knowledge of our this kind of messy Hamiltonian. Yeah, the, the trick is the following. So consider the a four manifold with open boundary. So the N4 is our four manifold, the N3 is its boundary. And we can uh, put the point, the extra point outside this manifold connect it to the boundary. So this is the cone, cone of the N3, CN3. And we can, group this CN3 and the M4 on the boundary, and this from a closed manifold. And since we already defined a 4D bulk Hamiltonian, we can just apply our Hamiltonian on this new manifold M4 tilde. And for, for the degree of freedom living inside the CN3, the cone of N3, we just treat as a boundary term. So we can write down the boundary Hamiltonian as this way. Yeah, so this is the three plus one D, so the 3D Hamiltonian. So I can use the definition of car product to, to draw this Hamiltonian 10 by 10. Yeah, so for the first two lines, the first line is just the fermionic torical. So so, so 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 far we have defined the theory on the cubilatis with two degree of freedom. The one is the poly on the edges, and poly on, on the face. So here the dash line means the dual lattice. So it's a face degree of freedom. Yeah, so the first turn is just the standard fermionic torical. And the second turn is just the X star turn decorated with, with some, some Z, Z tail. Yeah, so the red part is the X, X star turn and the ZE is along this six green, green line. And the blue face we define operate is called, called KF. It's a product of a ZF and a square root of the flux. So we can think of this is just some gauge constraint on the, on the three plus one D. Every other term must be coming with them. Yeah, so the, okay, the, the third line here is just a plaquette term. So we can easily verify these three plaquette they do commune with the above constraint because it has nothing to do with Z there. And this Z plus A term will commune with the X star term. Yeah, similar here, this Z star term will commune with this X plus A term. So this is the operator which commune with the, the first line. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused about you, you have XF on edges, but also XE on edges. Yeah. So it's a cubic lattice 
we have so two types of dual or? Yeah, uh, no, no, they are, they are two, literally two. We have ZE and ZF. Uh -huh. Yeah. But they're, you both put them on the edges? Oh, no, no, uh, ZE is on the edges, ZF is on the face. Okay, and, but on the leftmost figure, I see the F on an edge. Uh, so the, the, dash, the dash line is the face here. It's in a dual lattice. The, the dash okay, line yeah, yeah. So, so, so the dash is a dual, dual cubic lattice. Right. Um, okay. So you have two degrees of freedom. One is on, yeah, one exactly. is on the usual lattice and one's on the dual. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if we try to ignore this detail, there's no Z part. They are just two decoupled three D toroidal, and now we just think of they are two three D toroidal, and they mix with each other in some complicated way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's come in the most in, most interesting part. So the, the the first line the first line here I draw it on the left. So we have already seen this kind of operate before. This is just some, some fermion copying. So the XF will end up coming with the ZF sampler. So this is the copying of fermion particle. Here, the UE is the, the, the loop excitation. Yeah, so the definition is the following. So we apply the X on the E, and there are some Z, there are two Z at the bottom. And there are four CD plus K. So here I define a CD, CD plus K in this way. For example, on, on this plus K attached with this single edges, the control, control Z on this plus K is defined to be A1 times A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5. So it's like the flux operator here is the delta A times this A1. So this is, you can think, simply answer this term as the A cup delta A. Yeah. So I think this is the most exciting excitation of exciting excitation I, I found for, for, for this model. So, so let, let, let me summarize in, in more clear way. Oh yeah. Yeah, so, so far the first line here, we can consider is a, a gauge constraint. So every operate must commute with them. And for this gauge constraint, the easiest operate we write down is just some flux operation. So this is the Z, ZF flux around a cube, and this is the ZE flux around a plaquette. And we, the, the following question we can ask, okay, what type of the excitation operate? We can violate this flux by the commute with the above gauge constraint. So on the left side, we can control some fermion hopping. And we can verify this fermion hopping. They only violate the sum, sum Z plaquette, the Z square term, ZF cube term. And this operate commute with the first line. And secondly, we can write down some loop excitation because the loop excitation con contain the XE here. So this XE will enter commute with four plus K around this, this phase. So this loop excitation will, so this excitation will create a loop around this, this edge E. So this is called loop excitation. And we can verify this turn to commute with the, the first line. I think this is the most, Amazing part, I, yeah. When I first control this kind of model, I think it's not, not <laughs> reasonable to, to consider excitation, but it turns out to be this is the correct excitation for, for the loop, for the loop, for the for Z plug tent. Okay, so let's try to argue why this is a fermion loop. So we first, Notice this operate is not order two, it's order four. So if we apply the u squared twice, it gives you some, some, some z plus k. So actually the ue operate and the ue minus, they are different. So the, the z operate here is in these two edges 
and the z operate on, on, the, on the ue inverse is in, in this address. Okay, so this is the, the key for fermionic statistic. So on the left hand side here, we multiply the, the loop excitation on the membranes. So this is kind of, of the membranes operate we apply on some huge surface. So we can see in the bulk inside, there's a purely, purely X operate. So inside the bulk, it's just like a traditional end loop operate inside a 3D toroidal. Then, so I, I draw two direction. This is true in every direction in a the bulk, there's only X part. And now I try to add the orientation reversing domain work here. So if I add the green line here on the left, I apply the UE, the operate for, for, for loop excitation. On the right hand side, I apply the, the inverse. And due to the difference of the location of the Z operate, there's some Z operate appear on, around this domain wall. So there's some Z here. So this Z operate is important to make sure on the domain, this has some line excitation, which is from young statistic. Yeah, so let me show you clearly how to verify this. So we consider three different uh, region and I, I cut the domain wall in this green line. So on the left, I only apply the UE. On the right, I only apply UE inverse. So around this line A, B, C, I extract the, the part which is relevant. Yeah, so you can see on, on this side, there's some XZ part. On the vertical one, there's some XZ. So I just try to extract the, the relevant, relevant piece on this uh, domain wall. Yeah, so we can verify uh, this, I call it VA, VB, VC. So when we go to the T-junction process, this gives you a minus sign. So which means on the domain wall, it holds the fermion hopping uh, during, during this, this part. Uh, I also verify using the other skin, the, the process from Fikowski, Ha, and Hessin. I plug in our loop excitation into their process, and I write a mathematical code to, to check how does this operate evolve under this kind of process. It turns out to be equal to minus one exactly. So let's verify my can before the fermion line on the domain wall is equivalent to flipping the loop give you minus one. Yeah. And finally, so this is my last slide. So you may wonder, okay, so this operate looks super complicated. Why, why is there any other possibility for the fermionic loop? Yeah, the answer is yes, and indeed very easy. So, so let's go back to the traditional 3 plus 1D bosonic toroidal. Let's write down the loop operate, just B plus A1 cup A1. Yeah, so, so this operate can be drawn in, in this way. Yeah, so we can verify this operate. Also, so this is the X on this link and the control Z on, on the, these two and these two and these two and these two. So we can verify this one when we plug in into the hard hashing and Fikowski process, this give you minus one. And we can also see from a domain wall because we can use the identity when the A1 is the closed form, we have A1 cup A1 equal to delta A divided by two. And when we have the domain wall, the delta A divided by two just give you the A on the domain wall. So you have the X times Z, X times Z, X times Z. So on the 2D, the XZ is just the fermion happy. So we have two ways to show this operate is the, the fermion, fermionic loop excitation. And this excitation is in the 3 3 plus 1D toroidal, and it's very simple. Sorry, what's the intuition for this excitation again? Uh, I, attach an M, I attach an M loop to something. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's something related to treasure charge or not. I, I don't know. Uh -huh. It looked like the end loop with some charge charge. Right, right. No, actually it's not it's uh -huh. not the charge of charge. So uh -huh. uh, you can think of it as you start from the end loop. Then uh, whenever you reverse the orientation, 
uh, of the end loop as some let's, let's say reverse orientation on some half field if you, you consider an infinitely uh, extended and uh, like m string and then you reverse the orientation on half of the string then the then then the, the junction well, then the uh, domain wall where you first orientation will have a fermion particle. Well, so you can, you can think of it as decorating the E particle on the, on the end looping uh, along the orientation reversing wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like a picture here. Um, and this only works in the fermionic. Sorry, the, this is the normal torque code, not, not, the, firm, not the fermionic one. This is the ordinary oh, torical. Ordinary torque. Yes. Okay, Ned, uh, is your question in yourself? Uh, let me ponder it a bit if you can go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so let's let's summary why I talk Mike today. So first we define the property of the fermion particle and fermion loop. And then we give the formal definition by the second and, and third civil winning case to justify the, the fermionic property of particle and, and, and loop. And the, oh, I want to emphasize that although I only show you how to control a W2, W3, but it turns out to be our recipe is quite general. So for any beyond command phase with all the two or four, this can be come from our construction like starting from higher phone SPT and gauging the high phone symmetry to obtain some, some, some using the U formula to obtain some simple winning case. Yeah, so we can control a very gen generic beyond command phase by higher phone symmetry. Yeah, and finally, the future work is we, we may want to generalize this to a higher dimension, like a fermionic membranes and how to utilize the force simple winning case. I think it's still very, Interesting open open question. Yeah. So finally, I want to thank for my collaborate and Tang Kapsin and Liu Hei for YRC. They give a, give us a lot of help on, on this project. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, so thank you very much. Yeah, any question? I do have one. I don't know what I can ask first. Maybe I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, you should. You can ask. Um, can I just because I, I need to go soon? Um, okay, so, go ahead. yeah, thank you for the very nice talk. This is like fantastic, actually. So, um, I want to ask about your higher form um, theory that you wrote down. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think there, there's this uh, one paper by Ryan Throngren that also constructs a boundary theory um, of this 5D SPT. Mm -hmm. So here they insert the uh, well. Here you also insert the uh, the W two as a as like a curvature, right? And W three is a, a two curvature or like a higher higher form curvature essentially. Um, but in the so you use both, and but in the context of two gauge theory, um, you can't have ordinary curvature, right? Your your one form gauge field has to be flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I guess your model is a little bit different than the um, than the two gauge theory that the uh, the um, that Ryan Throngren and uh, Anton Kapustin has in twenty fifteen. Uh, which which paper? The higher higher SPD? Or? Yes, yes, yeah. Well, I think uh, I think uh, Yuan's talk is also control the Hamiltonian. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think Ryan Anton's work probably is just passing the ball. Yeah, but, but, but oh, but I, yeah, I that's think right. Yeah one, yeah, one picture I I do copy from Ryan. Uh, let me see, let me find it. So, uh, so when I can draw the Hamiltonian, yeah, yeah. So, so this picture, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, this, this is one, yeah. from Ryan Anton's paper. I I I cite here. Yeah, yeah. They, that, they that's, provide yeah. basically. I think the procedure is exactly the same as the standard. For some SPT, but it just has a group on a different degree of fit, on different dimension. Like usually we put a group element on the vertex, but for the higher form symmetry, we just have the Z2 field on the link, Z2 field on the face. But I think the logic is exactly the same. Just you write 
write write down like action using some higher car product and mm -hmm. higher higher fuel. Yeah. Yeah, because I can see that from, for example, the two gauge theory, you can insert W three as the Posenov class mm -hmm. for your two group. Um, but I mean the decoration that they define for a two gauge theory, where you get like a Yetter model when you discretize, mm -hmm. the procedure to doing that you need flatness on the faces, like for the links you need flatness, so you can't insert W two. So I, I guess this model specifically you're looking at it's a little bit different than the uh, than than a two gauge, like it's a higher higher form mm -hmm. model, but it's not exactly a two gauge. It has more structure i would say right because like even in the hamiltonian you described you have um like the dual lattice enters the picture right um, we, use, we use different degree of freedom on link and face they try to couple and play play some rule with each other and i think this kind of twisting give you the w2 or w3 yeah uh I, I'm not sure how, uh, how, but I think in their paper, they, they don't quite discuss gravitational anomaly, right? They, they focus on more. Yeah, on they, more. yeah they don't because the, the link decorations has to be flat. So you, so. Um, I, I guess yeah, yeah, for no, their I'm model, here, if, they, yeah. if you just had the last term, like which, if you just had the last term, which is A2 to cup W3, that would, that would be the one where it's flat, right? But here they add, uh, also add a B term with other other SPT yeah, terms, yeah. that's why. Yeah, exactly. There are, I guess you could say there are like source terms for the for the curvature here, but um, yeah, I guess you can also insert excitations, but here the excitation is like topological. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks for the comment. Yeah, okay, thank you. Great talk. Okay. You have a question? Other questions? I have a question about your lattice model. Yeah, which part? Uh, the Hamiltonian? Your, mm -hmm. Yeah, your Hamiltonian is defined in three spatial dimensions, correct? Right. Um, this is confusing because I thought this model is anomalous. Oh, yeah. So is it, it's somehow connected to the four dimensional bulk here? Uh, yeah, so so there are two ways to say it. So one way to say is here, this is a full Hamiltonian. There are, there are indeed some bulk turn here. So I just ignore the bulk turn. I only show you the, the boundary part. So this gives you some boundary excitation. And, but I think the, the more formal way to say is, is like just like a three from young worker one model on the surface, you can impose some constraint and there's only three fermion excitation. Uh, but the Hilbert space is different. So here we impose this as a gauge function. The Hilbert space is no longer the, the, Prada, the Prada state, the Prada state of some, some cubic. I see. Yeah, you're not showing us the full Hamilton, just the constraints imposed at the boundary. Yeah, yeah you, you can think of on the three fermion worker one, the three, if you have a two copy of Torico, you can make a two copy of Torico become two copy of three fermion. And somehow you like a uh, constraint the, the one layer of three from young, you say this is not allowed. So you can still see some three from young 2D topological order, but it's not a purely 2D theory. It just it's just a two, on some constraint space. I think the same story applies here. If I impose the first line as a constraint, we do some see some from young line and from young worksheet. Right. And a, a related question. Do you have a good explanation at the level of the lattice why this theory is anomalous? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I, I don't know. You are saying like a 2D, we can have some chiral charge equal to format A, and this must not be computing projector. You are looking for a similar argument here? Well, there, this is a more severe anomaly because um, in, in the 2D case, it just says you can't have a commuting projector Hamiltonian, but here it's saying there is no Hamiltonian whatsoever, right? Right. I, I don't have any Hamiltonian level understanding to, to see the anomaly. We only have the, the field theory argument I showed from calculating the, 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 the yeah. partition function. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, maybe like, let me add something. Uh, in the last slide, the summary outlook, mm -hmm. you mentioned you can construct phase with this, uh, maybe you mean the classification is Z2 or Z4, is that right? Uh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, the order of, yes, exactly. Z2 or Z2 for class, but do you really mean Z2 to the any power or just Z2 or Z4? Why do you, why, why just two and four? I, I forgot the percent percent. Do you remember the reason? It's percent here. Oh, but let me see. Uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the quick answer is like the, the, the U formula only give you the U class and it's not, it, it, you cannot just have W1, W2, W3 like uh, for free. I think from the U formula, you, you can only control a partial of the Stephen Winnie class and you need to manipulate with the Stephen Winnie class to make them product and cancel. Yeah, so well, I think it's yeah. a subset of the full beyond homage phase. Right, so uh, another way to say this is that uh, we can construct this model for every person in beyond group homage phase that whose effective function can be expressed in terms of the Stephen Winnie classes. And also the background gauge field for the internal symmetries. But uh, Stephen Winnie class is, is mod two, so you can also have mod four. So for instance, the pun the uh, punching square of W two uh, is mm. order four. Okay. Fine. Okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, Yuan, can I have a simple question about your yeah. Hamiltonian? So the Hamiltonian is uh, purely three, three plus one the local Hamiltonian, right? Yes. Yeah, but uh, the uh, anomaly is supposed to be a gravitational anomaly. Is mm -hmm. there any obstruction to write down such kind of local Hamiltonian in three plus one D? Oh, I think the point is here, I. I only show you partially the like, excitation, like because I enforce the first line as some, as some gauge function. Okay, I say I never break the first line. So under this condition, I can write down some boundary, some excitation operate on the super one d boundary. So it has a fermion particle and fermion loop. But in principle, if I just write it down as the whole Hamiltonian, they exist other type of, of excitation operate which can break the first line. So I think the story is very similar to what I told Tyler before. So consider on a 2D, you can prepare two copies of Torico and you can rearrange the anion to make it the two copy of three fermion model. Okay, yes, on the first layer of, of three fermion, you do have some excitation correspond to moving three types of, of, of fermion. But on the second layer, you also have the three fermion. But I can just add some gauge constraint to project out the second layer. So I said, okay, I am not allowed to make any excitation for the second layer. So from this perspective, okay, it looks like on the 2D, I have the purely 2D theory with the three fermion excitation. But the true story is like, they are more beyond the three fermion to make it non-anomalous, but I just, hid, they are just hidden. I just say, oh, I don't want them. I, I want to ignore them. The same thing I, I do here, I say I impose the first line as a gauge function. I already project out many possible excitation and I only show you the fermionic particle and fermionic loop. I see, so, so, so if we want to realize all these gauge constraints by uh, local Hamiltonians, it must be some four plus one Hamiltonian. Uh, right, so this gauge constraint comes from the bulk. So you, you can, yeah, so this is the first line come from, the, we apply the bulk Hamiltonian in this M, M4 tilde. I see, thanks. Yeah, so, yeah, I think it's very similar to Fikowski, High and Hastings, their three from Young Worker one. They start from the bulk and they truncate the bulk and tr the truncation turn on boundary give you some constraint. And then they try to add other excitation and the only excitation is a three type of fermion. It's the same story. The bulk SPT give you some boundary constraint. 
这些方位上限。Um, so if if I allow the gauge constraint to be violated now, so what what would be the full three D theory? Uh, okay. maybe two copy of Fermion particle or two copy of Fermion loop. I I have a figure. I think uh -huh. yeah. But somehow in that two copies, it it's can not, there's secretly not. there's secretly a a loop that is a fermion. I think so. Yeah. And is that related to the last the second to last slide you were showing? Uh, second to last. Uh, the, the 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 yeah so, this one is it somehow related to this? Uh, yeah, you are saying oh in a torical late to is take some fermionic uh, loop. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I guess it could be related. Uh -huh. but, you know, I think we, we try to argue in the torical there are indeed two fermionic loop. They are the other one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an yeah. interesting one. I will say there are still too many things haven't figured out. Yeah, although there are three papers. Cuban's paper, me and Paulson and Hart, Hastings and Pikowski. Uh, can you comment about uh, fermioni membrane in, in the last comment of your summary? Yeah. Oh, uh, I, yeah, so, so one strategy is try to generalize Vygotsky's process. Okay, given this, so can we try to design some T-junction upgrade for membranes moving, I don't know, in superson or four person to, to cancel all, all dynamic code phase. This is one possibility to, to, to define fermionic membranes in, 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 in maybe higher dimension. And I'm not quite sure about W4, so, yeah, so we must use some 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 relation. I think you must be, you are more familiar with this. You know, I, I learned all the formula from your paper. How do I calculate higher <laughs> general higher stable only case from a lower one? Yeah, so we, we need to apply some trick. So for example, we, we use the in my previous uh, let me see. In my previous argument, I use the W3 equal to delta W2 divided by two. So I think we need to use the, the I think it's called full formula again. We can try to decompose the highest different winning case into the product of lower one and use the lower dimensional thing to, to argue. I think it's more like a, a intuitive feature given in the beginning, just want to make sure when you say from the membrane, does it mean there's again some orientation reversing <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. What I mean. Yeah, it's very yeah. So start from the W three to the definition of the orientation reversing. Yeah, it's it's very non trivial as you can see. We need to go through many steps and to understand what's going on. So I don't have any quick intuition to see what's the how it look like in a higher dimension. But how do you know it's called from Yanni membrane? I think because you already give a name, so I saw you maybe you already know the picture. Oh no, no, I just I just say <laughs> my definition is very simple. Delta A equal to W2, delta B equal to W3, and delta C equal to W4. It's a very intuitive <laughs> way to call it from Yanni membrane. membrane. Is there something like a I'm not exactly sure that that's correct, but the orientation reversing domain war in this membrane, which is which is maybe two dimensions, and that that somehow you decorate the fermioni loop that that is captured by this two dimensional object. I'm not going to just just go one high dimensional. I I don't know, really know, but I I'm just making an analogy for going one dimension higher from the beginning of your picture, uh, the, the beginning picture of your, the, the beginning of your talk. Yeah. The, the, I don't know if it makes sense. I think it's, 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 it's reasonable to say that, but I think it depends on more careful study. I haven't 
try and try again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any Same more comments? Questions? Even now, then very yes. related. Quick yeah. question. So, okay. I, you you mentioned this orientation reversing domain wall. I guess mm -hmm. I should think of that as some dual of W one, but I I don't see W one appearing in the rest. Oh, no, of the uh, it, it's it's or, different. Uh, it's in low, low dimensional membrane, not the, the full system. Oh, yeah, the full oh. system is orientable. We just you can embed client battle into some 4D space, right? Mm -hmm. So just you can embed some unorientable in, in the orientable uh -huh. manifold. Yeah. And so it's W1 of that yeah, yeah. embedding can, the manifold. Mm -hmm. two, two and, and so it should extend to something else in the full. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, it's just on the surface. Sure, sure, but but does it come from a restriction of some other class in the full manner? I or I don't know. Uh, no, never mind. I was just wondering if you knew it up the top. Yeah. Yeah, the, the full system still can be just uh, orientable. You can put climb bottle in M4. Right, right. I agree. I agree. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank uh, you for the great talk. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the organization. Yeah, it's my pleasure to give it to it out. Okay, so see you soon, hopefully. Yeah, see you. Bye. Bye bye.